Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for joining. Um, I'm, uh, and thank you, Andrea, for joining us on our first uh, ZenCon conference. Thank you for inviting me and being my, my in English, so it's very rare. Yeah, so, so Andra and I met through a, a mutual friend, actually at a birthday party in Cape Town. So for three days, we were, we were together, and uh, during the paddle tournament of that, of that weekend, uh, we ended up um, sharing an interest of uh, NFTs and crypto, ended up uh, uh, chatting a, a, a lot, and... Uh, uh, you know, had uh, he had his profile picture on Instagram as a, as a, and uh, when you actually look at the calendar of events, uh, the speaker list for this conference, Andrea is the only one who has actually his board apes as uh, as his profile picture. So that shows the the dedication uh, around it. But uh, for those who follow uh, English Premier League football, uh, Andrea needs uh, no introduction as the uh, owner of uh, Leeds United. Um, and, you know, I have to say, Andrea, and that's going to be my first question, the last game of the seasons, we have to talk about it because, um, you know, Leeds needed to, to win that game and we were in the 94th minute and, um, you know, some miracle happened and there was the win 2-1 with basically before the, the referee uh, blew the whistles and then the cameras were following you, you know, crossing the, the entire pitch and celebrating with all the players on it. That must have been the, one of the, the, the best victory you've, uh, you've had as a, as a club owner. Yeah, actually a good point, a good memory about that, that game because uh, I think as a missed opportunity for me, I should have created an NFT with my uh, art beat. Uh, it would be sold very well. <laughs> now, it was a fantastic experience, obviously, to, to live and, and um, moment like uh, the last goal in the last minute of the game and stay in Premier League was fantastic. So you're in the head of, of many companies, so Acer, Acer Ventures, 11 Sports, Leeds United. Uh, what is a typical day for you? Where is you wake up and you think about football, do you think about business, do you think about Web3? Um, how, how does the, the, the days and the week play along? Yeah, the priority obviously changed by the period of time in the summer football take me more busy uh, during the year when they play actually I'm less busy for football more busy on media and business development of new project uh, the last couple of years actually I was very busy in studying um, metaverse web3 nfts uh, marketplace and how to apply um, these opportunities into the sports and media industry where I'm, I'm, I came from and I think we're still really behind and there's a lot to do. So I'm very glad to be here and have the opportunity to improve my uh, knowledge and also increase my networking because there are really a lot to do. There is a lot to do. Um, as you know, we have, we have been working to build a, an STO, a security token offer, or a DAO around football clubs. And I think could be a solution that would help a lot of clubs to get more financing as well to give the opportunity to fans to participate in the ownership of the club. So, so I, I imagine that you know club owners meet on a monthly basis or so. What, what do you see as the level of knowledge of Web3 when you speak to the league and when you speak to the club owners? Are they interested in the space? Do they see that as a distraction? Do they see that as the future? Um, at the, until now, I think they've seen it more like an opportunity to sell sponsorship on the shirts uh, for... Um, uh, digital coin company and uh, Web3 players to create visibility for new, co new, new brands. Uh, and uh, particularly last year, I think we were very busy in the Premier League as well to sell the license, the digital, um, the license for the digital asset, including um, collectibles of video highlights of the league for past and current season. So we have, a, we have a secure deal with Dapper Lab, a New York-based company that uh, was the first mover with NBA, uh, I think about three years ago, and uh, it started this season with the Premier League. So, but the approach is more similar to what they've done in the industry before with the media rights, licensing the asset to other companies working with them. Uh, I think in the, in the next future, the leagues should, and the club should see how they can market themselves directly to their, their fans, the digital, digital asset. And when you uh, 
put a plan together and when you, when you speak to the fans, I mean the relationships you know, between the team and the fans is, is obviously crucial. Um, how, how do you feel the, the audience, the, the fans, um, you know, what do you feel their appetite is in terms of being more involved with the, with the clubs itself, uh, their degree of technology, savviness, uh, how do you feel that bridge, uh, how do you feel that bridge is going to happen? Yeah, obviously, the generation has changed. There are fans that um, maybe they are a little bit older and they, they, they are really traditional, particularly in England. But there is also a, a new generation of fans that they want to be involved in every uh, decision process. And football nowadays is, uh, is consumed daily or, hour, or every hour by social media. There is a huge, massive demand of content. And I think the club should leverage on that to create opportunity and a bridge with the fans. And also become a, becoming this a monetization opportunity to create a more revenue for the club and expand our resources as well. And, you know, a, a lot of the players, obviously, you know, Gen Z, um, do you speak NFTs with them? Are they interested in the space? I know in the U.S. a lot of NBA players on, on board apes. Um, do you feel that as, you know, the, the player pool, what, what is their uh, feeling in that space? Yeah, obviously, in the, in the period of boom last year, everybody wants to buy, and um, including our players and all the players I know, they... They, they were very keen, or they invested, many of them, they invested in NFTs. Uh, the problem, I think, generally, that there is a, a lack of education. So, for example, um, I think there is a lot of um, people that invest in NFTs based on uh, um, recommendation, personal friends, recommendation, or um, temporary um, hype of one, one, or the way they get market these NFTs. So there is not much research, and that's brought actually with the market going down in the last months, a lot of people uh, wasting their saving. So this is something we need to, over, as an industry, we, in the Web3, we need to improve uh, uh, in terms of um, probably the next future after this crisis, probably I think there will be less speculation and more um, um, intelligent investor approach. Uh, in my case, for instance, I focus my investment only, I would say, I call it a blue chips in NFTs uh, industry. So I bought Bored Ape, I bought World of Women, I bought um, Cool Dot. So I, I bought all um, projects where the, the community is very strong, uh, where I think that there is a, a longevity plan to keep up to keep the, the project alive. So even the, in this period, the, the value has gone down, I, I'm sure over the next uh, one or two years, the project will be back because like when I, I bought Apple in the stock exchange, uh, not always was a good mar mar market moment for Apple, but over the period of time, medium, long term, the value is there. So I think we'll be ap happening the same for the blue chips and uh, we need as an industry, make sure we can protect the less marked investor to understand and be educated without being speculated because there's a lot of save, money saved, maybe they don't have disposal, big disposal and they bet in the industry because uh, the industry allow everybody to invest and uh, is a democratization is a fantastic opportunity but at the same time we should protect them and, and um, create also insurances or create more opportunity to communicate. And, and as we see the uh, you know, Web3 is all about community. And probably one of the biggest communities in the world is, is in sports. And your community recently has been uh, growing drastically in the United States. How do you um, continue to grow that community, not only in England, because the beauty with Leeds, which I think celebrated its 100th anniversary, 100 year anniversary, how do you grow that community beyond the city, beyond the UK and all over the world? What is kind of the roadmap and the approach around that? Of course, we need to be successful in winning games. And uh, so like we started the season, we won 3-0 with Chelsea. It, was, it became very popular, particularly in the US. And we have uh, an American coach and uh, we have uh, two American players. So our, our audience in the US has grown dramatically in the last couple of months. And um, for example, in the last games, NBC, uh, swap our game that's supposed to be on the OTT platform Peacock and they put it back on the free-to-air channel NBC Sport uh, moving Liverpool and Manchester City in the OTT so this is a fantastic achievement for our club that is only uh, back in the Premier League only for three years so um, 
obviously the sports decision are impacting the popularity, but then we need to support that with uh, marketing, merchandise, digital asset, everything possible that can uh, uh, create a link with the fans' bases. So we, we saw that ApeCoin was accepted in a mode of payment for companies like Gucci, uh, LVMH, etc. When do you think that um, the Premier Leagues or individual teams are going to jump and starting to sell tickets with you know, cryptocurrency or even issuing their own, their own crypto? Is that something that in foreseeable future could be happening? Uh, definitely, yes. We've been working with the big global brand, I can name the, the is, a, is a credit card issuer. Uh, to create a, an NFT ticket uh, um, that could become a collectible as well a ticket for, for fans. And uh, hopefully we will, be, we will be running this project over this season. So definitely there are opportunities. Um, and uh, I think the ticket and the NFTs linked to the ticket should, co should include and in futures content and uh, um, opportunity and many other features that can uh, engage more with the user and get to know the user even better. So, so one of the things about, about utilities is things that don't cost a lot of money but have a, a high perception, a high you know, value per perceptions. Um, I would imagine that every day people you know, ask you things related to the club itself. What would you say is the most popular, unusual things that fans would ask? Do they want to go in the locker room? Do they want to you know, be sitting with the players on the beach? What kind of experience can an NFT bring to a, a users, to an end fan, that you think could have a lot of value? For, for sure, the, the first basic is to have the opportunity to get tickets because we have a, a stadium that is uh, packed uh, all the time. So we have a stadium that we need to increase, but is, is still uh, we have three times the, the demand of our capacity every game. So the first priority is to get the opportunity to be selected in the, in the tickets um, sales. Then I think the other opportunity are engagement with the team, with the player, have a feedback from the players, participate in money can buy experience like locker room or, or be uh, in our lounge with the directors. So things like that, they're always, um, uh, they have always very high demand. And you know, one of the popular movies uh, a few years ago was the, money, um, the movie Moneyball with, with Brad Pitt, where you know, uh, studying statistics, looking at the numbers, look at technology to help you know, the performance on, of, of the team on the field. Is that actually something real that is happening in every day uh, as far as the decision makings of, of the plays? Uh, Fortunately, yes, even sometimes I'm a bit frustrated about that because sometimes I want to advise about one player or someone player I like, but we really follow a, a, a precise process of data analysis uh, before we take any player. And then obviously we check also the personality side, the private life and all the other um, elements that can influence the career of the player. But we, we have driven by data for sure, particularly performance data, running data, athletic data in our selection. Would you say that, that running a team or running a company is pretty much similar, a combination of like the emotional aspects and then the, the data, or one is more than the other? Um, over the long term, I think it's similar, because um, if you um, establish a culture in the club, in the comp it's like in a company, and uh, if you establish some, this culture in the organization with uh, your values and um, your vision, and this is clear over the time I think you succeed uh, like in the business as well in the sport. But um, in the short term it's very different because you don't have a direct communication with the, with the staff uh, and with the players every day. So you, are, you need to touch and go because you don't, you're not the coach. So you're not involved in every single part of the process like maybe in your business when you have mo much more direct impact. And, and w when you look at your, at your Web3 journey, wh what do you see coming up as uh, the most exciting things uh, that, you know, the, is it the implementation in existing business and how this technology can help? Is it mostly on the NFT side with your collection of NFTs? Is it mostly purely on the investments of crypto? Which gets you the most excited? Um, look, I have two projects that I really would like to develop and you know, I've shared with you uh, some time ago since our first meeting probably. Uh, one is to, democratize the ownership of uh, 
sports assets, sports club or any sports could be. Um, and this will be, um, I think, really important because we'll give the opportunity to many fans to feel owners of their own, own club and get benefit. Uh, up to today, nobody has done this project yet. There are companies like Socios that they create uh, a token uh, and um, it's very popular, but it's only speculative. There is, I mean, I don't want to criticize the project. It's actually very popular and successful, but there is no ownership attached and there is no actually very real uh, utilities and benefit. I think as in, we need to offer benefit, utilities, but also give the opportunity to participate in the ownership. Um, like could be an IPO, so this could be done by a security token offer or a DAO. And uh, but the moment uh, we have been studying a lot, there is really complication, particularly on the on the, um, the lack of regulation in the market. Uh, so it takes some time, and uh, hopefully uh, one day I will be able to to do it. Not necessarily only in my club, but also in, in other clubs. So set up this as a service, um, as a financial digital services. And, and the other one is more linked to the media and the activities that um, we can do and transform the NFT into like a loyal program where we can get utilities and more you use the content, more you uh, watch something in sports or music or entertainment, more you get utilities and benefit. So transform the, the old um, system of loyalty program into an NFT um, world and Web3. And you think there's gonna be a, a domino effect that you know one club will be brave enough to do that and others will, will follow, like a first mover advantage uh, around that and maybe, you know, and do you believe that the English Premier League is actually going to be the first league who's going to adventure within this space or do you see the French League or the German or the Italian League being more advanced from a technology standpoint and a risk-taking standpoint? Um, don't know, good question. Um, I think it's more about, the more than the count, it's more about the individual leader of the club that want to push and go in this direction. I would have done it last year if I was not really stopped uh, by the decision of which way and also the, the regulation behind that is still not there. So the technology is m like off ep often happen when uh, there's a disruption in the market, the technology is ahead and the law is a bit behind. So we need to wait until the two things they match. And when you, you see, and, and, and I will end up with these questions, when you see um, kind of your journey as an owner of a club and, and as a young owner of the club, what was the, the inspirations that, you know, drove you to that or the person that you looked up to um, within, within that space? Was there some Italian football clubs owners because you're from Milan originally uh, or was it simply, you know, a coincidence that uh, you ended up there? It was uh, not really a coincidence, but it was uh, that I'm attracted by challenges. So with the, when it happened, the first time I heard about Leeds United, I was having lunch in Manchester before a game Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain. And the lunch, I think, it was uh, Kenny Douglas, ex-legend of Liverpool, was talking about the sleeping giant, Leeds United, that for over 16 years was not part of the Premier League, but in, back in the beginning of 2000 was one the sixth biggest club in the world. It was a, a club that won trophies and was very popular, both in the 70s and the early 2000s. So when, uh, when I, I searched about the club, I, I, I felt very attracted by being the one to bring it back to. So I wake the sleeping giant was my, my motivation. I think that's a, a, thank God I did it. I, we are awakened. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's, uh, that's a, a great way to end it. So thank you so much, Andrea, for uh, coming and speaking with us. And thank you, everybody.